The September 9, 1997 school board meeting is called to order. First item on our agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, The first item will be adjustments to the agenda and under number nine, unfinished business, the co-curricular fee committee report will be tabled until our next meeting. And I have one request for uh, one unpaid, one day of unpaid leave from a staff member. We will add New business. under I. Are there any others? Seeing none, we move on to approval of school board meeting minutes of August 26, 1997, regular meeting, August 26, 1997, special meeting. They and, were the same night. Pardon? They were the same night. And September 3rd, 1997, special meeting. Any adjustments to those? Um, under the regular meeting of August 26, on page 4, item number 9B, in the reestablishing the space study committee, we had agreed to add a community service advisory board member as a member of that committee. Are there any other changes? Seeing none, the minutes stand. Okay, we move on to comments for the high school and middle school representatives. We'll call on the high school. You would come forward, and since you're new to our first meeting, state your name, your grade. Hi, I'm Matt Martin, junior at Cape High School. I'm Ryan Moore. Um, we're the new school board reps, and uh, as you know, we've been in school, we've been back in school for a week, and so we're just getting used to the routine of going to school every day. Um, the first day of school went well. Um, we had a school assembly where we got to meet our new principal, Mr. Dawson, and uh, he gave a nice speech to all the kids, and we also got to meet uh, Oh, not meet, but uh, Mr. Ely, our new vice principal, also gave a speech. Um, we'd also like to thank Mr. Sweeney, who came in and talked to us um, about how he would like the school board and the students to become more cooperative and uh, to speak to each other more. And that's our job this year, and we'd like to do a good job of that. Um, really, right now, this Friday and Saturday is homecoming, and... Uh, We've decided as a student council that this Friday, we'd like to show a lot more school spirit for homecoming that we haven't been able to do in recent years. So uh, sports teams are going to be wearing warm-up jerseys and suits, and all students are encouraged to wear maroon and white to show s school spirit. Also on Fridays, there's going to be a disco dance held by the senior class, and um, there's going to, there'll be all kinds of activities on Saturday from games and stuff like that. Um, so far this week, the SAC has had a brief meeting where we've been able to organize ourselves, and each class has had two class meetings where we've been able to set up fundraising and uh, organize ourselves for homecoming and set our goals for the rest of the year. Um, right now, we also have the prom committee, committee which is being organized, but right now we're, all the um, boards and the council is really in an organizational process right now, so we don't have a lot of new news to tell you. Fall sports is off to a really good start. The um, Both boys varsity and girls varsity soccer teams won their openers. Um, boys won go against Gorham 1-0, to zero, and the girls won against York 2-1. to one. Um, Both boys JV 1 and 2 uh, were victorious also, as well, the, as, well as the girls JV. Um, varsity field hockey won 4-2 versus Freiburg, and the JV tied their opener. 
Um, and golf, uh, golf has had two matches, both of which they won. Um, both boys and girls cross country uh, has not had any regular season games yet. Their opener is Friday, I believe. But they, uh, both teams did very well at the Kenny Buck Invitational, which was preseason. There's not anything else, Matt. That's uh, all that's going on. Any questions? Uh, just a quick one. Last spring, uh, I think it was the student council starting to contact the board members to come and spend a day at school with them. Uh, I, I did attend one day, and I thought it was a great experience. I hope that's continued uh, to invite myself and my fellow board members over. It's a definitely. good day. Yeah, yeah we definitely need to continue doing that. Great. Have another one. We thank you very much. We look thank forward you. to seeing your faces at our succeeding meeting. Mm -hmm. um, since there are no middle school representatives appointed yet, um, we will move on to communications. Uh, the only thing I have is I wanted to draw the board members' attention to the MSMA conference on October 23rd and 24th. I know usually members go, last year Charlie went and Gail Dransfield went, found it very helpful. So if you're able to go, let us know and we'll do a group registration. If you don't have the program, I do have some extra ones here. And usually Thursdays, the 23rd, is the day that our, most school boards attend. So most school board workshops are done on that day. And that was going to be my communication, so. Charlie? <laughs> yes. As the, uh, as the student reps from the high school indicated, I had the opportunity to speak with the student body at the high school on opening day. I have specifically challenged them to work with the high school administrators and their teachers to find ways to increase their participation and input into school board matters that have an impact on them. And I hope I will be hearing back from them. I want to take the opportunity to thank uh, Peter Dawson and the entire student body for their very courteous and very warm welcome. I appreciated it. Thank you. Any other communications? Okay, we move on to the superintendent's report, and the first is the science curriculum report. <laughs> you didn't know you were on the agenda. Right, I guess I've come to be identified with it. The, uh... <laughs> it's yours. I think uh, we're getting to the point now, I mean, the most important part is implementing the program. And uh, we I started it, I think, this week. The um, ed techs and other people and all the teachers have carefully gone through all the material. We've straightened out uh, some of the missing or uh, unordered supplies, even in the midst of the UPS strike. And I really want to thank Gay Howe, who is in Ed Tech One at Pond Cove, who um, will be assigned that task during the year to keep things organized and replenish the kits, but she's really gone out of her way to make things run smoothly at the beginning of the year. The other news about the science project is that um, we started to develop a relationship with the Scarborough Learning Center last year, and then its existence was questioned and its life almost flickered out of existence. But um, through various grants at the state and national level, we think the Learning Center will be back in business again. And I was the first on the phone to put uh, Pond Cove and the middle school up for professional development around the FOSS kits, and they're delighted to do that. I'll know more in October about whether we can do that, but it looks very optimistic now. And I think you got in your packet a um, summary of the topics, um, K through 12, actually. I found that to be very helpful. It kind of brought everything into perspective. From, from what I've seen, it, it, it's, it's real, it, it's child-centered, as the saying goes, uh, the modern saying goes. But I've seen a lot of excitement on the teachers' faces and the, the kids um, I've seen today and yesterday are really involved with the material. And uh, as an extra added incentive, they seem to be doing real science. So it's really exciting. I think what it does for the board, it gives them the K-12 science experiences. Yep. Right, no more duplications, and we hope um, if there are gaps, we'll be able to fill them in a rational manner, so. We thank you, and we'll. Well, thank you for your support. It was a lot of money, but uh, I think it's worth it. Report on opening of school. Well, the schools did open, <laughs> and with uh, 
very smoothly, and obviously thanks to every single staff member, um, bus drivers, custodians, teachers, administrators, everyone really worked very well together, and it was a very smooth opening of the school year. And the only other comment I'd make is that you do have some enrollment figures, and the bottom line is K to 12, we have seven fewer students than last year, so basically we're at a flat enrollment. Uh, staff recognition update is the next topic, and we do have a few more people. We did read a list to you in the spring, and the computer program that we had missed a couple of people, so I need to read those names to you. We have Martin Watts, 30 years, Julie Robbins, 10 years, and Kristen Tripp, 10 years. And then for five years, we have Beverly Bisbee, Ellen Brady, Deborah Casey, Marilyn Dale, Katie Lisa, Lisa Martin, Lynn Mita, George Menelakis, Deborah Plummer, and Scott Shea, and we will recognize all of those people with the appropriate momentum. Um, in the throes of the budget in the spring, we did not give Lyle Kramer an opportunity to speak to you about the test results, so he is here tonight and he'll give you a brief report, and then if you have further questions, we can pursue that at a later date, and also on the, our regular schedule, testing reports will be on November is the next one, so he'll be back then anyway. Okay, I'll briefly uh, report on all three programs that we use. The uh, California Achievement Test was given in the springtime. And the results that came back this spring were shared with the teachers, and the results are pretty much similar to past years. Just a couple of highlights I'd like to point out is that um, most of the scores range from the high 70th percentile to the low 90th percentile for the middle student in each grade level. There are some lower areas. Um, in math, for instance, generally speaking, the math computation scores run quite a bit lower than the concepts and application. Uh, that occurs mostly at the elementary school and towards the end of the middle school years, those two scores come pretty much in line. Um, the spelling generally runs pretty low as well as word analysis that's tested in grades two and three. So that's a real quick summary. Do you have any questions about Is that? Is there any improvement in the um, spelling and word analysis as we try to teach more phonics in the elementary school? Have you seen any growth in those scores? Not really, no. Do we? These, the, uh, in grade two, the word analysis score was 51st percentile, and in grade three, it was 73. The spelling scores this year, grade two, 42nd percentile, grade three, 66, grade five, 75, grade six, 65, and grade seven, 56. And we usually score, you know, our students have the potential to score and usually do score in about the 80th percentile. Well, it's an area that we were, ho was hope were hoping would improve as we really got back to more phonics and um and I was just curious if we're starting to see any results yet, and it doesn't look like we are. It doesn't come through right there. Maybe a curriculum area. Well, yeah, needed. I just, I hope we take these scores and we don't, we tie them to the curriculum and really try to use them to advance the curriculum and not worry so much about what our scores are, but that how they can help us, as we say, every year. The grade eight students were tested in, in uh, the fall of 96, it was in October. We received these scores this springtime. And the uh, grade eight scores were down in some areas fairly significantly. Um, last year, the scores in reading was, were 320. Uh, the writing score was the one that was down the most. That was actually 255. Uh, in math, we received a score of 400, science 290, social studies 275, humanities 285, and the health was 270. Um, those scores are based on a range of 100 to 400, so the 400 was the uh, maximum score in math. We scored real well in math, and uh, the low score in writing was just about the average for the state. Um, 
because the scores were low, uh, Nancy Hutton and I met with representatives at both at the State Department level and from Advanced Systems, who does the uh, contracting for the state for the MEA testing. And there were some pretty clear reasons why we scored low in writing. And that is basically uh, based on the fact that the uh, strong scores that are, that are received by students across the state have a lot of elaboration and a lot of supporting detail for answers. And our students pretty much consistently put down the correct answer, but didn't elaborate enough to get an extra two points out of possible four in many cases. Um, when I did my report for, for tonight, I also noticed uh, in the gender differences, if you folks recall, each, each time I give you a written report, I break down the gender differences and the boys score in grade eight for this year was about 50% of what it was in uh, past years. And the way that that's measured now is uh, they don't give the scale scores for, for uh, reading, writing, and math anymore. So I've been using the percent of students who scored in the advanced range. And uh, half of the numbers of boys scored at that rate compared to the boys that scored at that level uh, a year ago and all past years, really. So it's pretty much identified. And uh, Nancy Hutton and I have uh, been working on a plan to you know, go to teachers at all grade levels because even though this test is taken at the eighth grade level, it's the beginning of the eighth grade level. And it's really more of a measure of performance throughout the whole grade, especially in grades five, six, and seven, more than in the eighth grade, really. So uh, we won't just be working with or talking to eighth grade teachers, it'll be uh, all middle school teachers. In um, grade four, it was much more positive. The uh, scores were real strong in reading. The uh, scale score was 390, writing 310, math 400, science 345, Social Studies 280, Humanities 390, and Health is 305. Uh, unlike the middle school, the, uh, there, was no, there was very little gender difference, if any at all. Uh, the boys were scoring equal to the girls, which is uh, very much different than what we usually see, or have seen in the last few years at the eighth grade level. Uh, so they were high and consistent. Did you do a written report on this for us? that I'm missing or no? You'll be receiving that in May according to the policy where, uh, according to the school policy, I'm supposed to report, I think it's in November in so, June. So in November, will we see some of this in writing? With you will see all of that in writing okay. and have copies of the Because uh, I have a hard time trying reports. to figure it out by listening to the scores. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any other questions? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, Lyle. The only other thing I have is that tomorrow we will be doing an exit interview with Jay Trevara, the technology coordinator, at 3 p.m. in the conference room for any board members who are available. Okay, we now move on to principal's reports and the middle school and Nancy Hutton, please. Good evening. Wow. Hit you right in the face here. Um, we've had a very successful opening to the year, so we look forward to many wonderful things happening. One of the wonderful things I'd like to do is just publicly thank Tom Eismeyer and his crew of hardworking teachers who worked on our science curriculum. As I've traveled around the science classrooms, you really see kids working, building terrariums, working with landforms, figuring out how to build a tower and it's science at its best. It's hands-on, it's discovery, it's focused. If there's a frustration from the students, as I was talking with one of our science teachers today, Cynthia Curry, she said, one of the students said the other day, you know, Ms. Curry, you haven't told us anything yet. We've had to do all the work. And um, that's exactly the way we want science to become, that there is a time when people like Sin Curry will say, OK, let's stop here and think, what have we learned so far? But there's going to be also a lot of time when there's discovery out there. And for students to find out that's what science is, 
discovering the unknown. So um, thank you very much, Tom, for that hard work. It's uh, been well received. And if you're ever looking for something to do, just drop by one of our science classrooms and they'll probably invite you in. <clears throat> uh, one of the things I wanted to share with you tonight is just a quick summary of our summer work. And we had three major areas that we were doing summer work in, in addition to the teachers who worked with Tom. Our foreign language teachers met several times in the summer. They were working on, first of all, they wanted to take some time to really review materials and textbooks as they look forth putting to, um, for, as part of the budget request for the 98-99 school year textbooks. If you remember correctly, they had some in this current budget, but then we moved that to science materials. So they really, and they were willing to do that because they felt they needed some more time to look over the materials. They have now narrowed it down to three, and they are also working very closely with the high school so that there is a continuous series that we use, and they feel they're on a very good track with that. Other time they spent working with the internet and in the area of foreign language, the lessons on the internet can really bring international education and conversational exchange as well as looking up things in the foreign country and in the foreign language um, to them right close at hand and they have all developed lessons to do that and then sharing those lessons around so that we've really got quite an um, opportunity for students to experience that. Much of it will take place, I think I was talking with Susan Dana this morning because I know she was looking at the computer lab of when she could get her classes in. Um, the ones I've seen so far, much of it works with the seventh and eighth graders, but I know there's also some plans to include the fourth, fifth, and sixth graders as well too. The other, another, a third area, because so we've done science, foreign language, and then mathematics, and both our fifth and sixth grade teachers met this summer uh, for some time to look over the everyday math series. That's the series that arrived very close to the start of school last year and that we used throughout the year. And what they wanted to do was to really go back and select those units that were most pertinent to study and especially to preparation of where we were going into in mathematics and to look for things that they wanted to add for supplemental material. As Lyle reported to you from our California Achievement Test, um, our students are not doing as well in computation as they are in the other part. That is in somewhat a reflection of our program and a criticism of the Chicago and Everyday Math Series program. So we have added computational programs to that and tests and drills to work on that um, to particularly address that weakness in the program. And the fourth area was in our eighth grade social studies program. This is the fourth year of our work to revise our social studies curriculum. And I know when the eighth grade teachers first met with Gail Parker, they were very concerned because they weren't sure what they were going to do. By the time that work ended, they were all absolutely energized to get started with the year. They felt they were ready. They had the materials. They knew what they were going to do for assessments. They knew what they were going to work in for off-site trips. They knew what they were going to do for projects and have it interconnected. So they're really very excited about this. And basically, they're studying US and world issues, focusing on justice systems, social and political change, minorities, diversity, and prejudice. Uh, they're doing a whole unit on main history and also um, continuing their work with the United States Constitution. This is a part of the old program that they retained with some additional adaptations and more materials for that. The only other summer work that we had is each grade level team met for half a day to um, get some things underway for the year, but the major part of their half day meeting was spent reviewing our new behavior code and going over the parent handbook so that we could all present that consistently and continuously to set a different kind of tone in our building this year. That has so far been working very successfully and I think we are all on the same page with that. So we'll continue to move forward with that work. At the June meeting, we talked about um, forming an outdoor experience committee task force. We have done that. We had our first meeting last Wednesday, and we will meet again tomorrow. We are still right now in the organizational stage, but tomorrow everyone is coming with their purpose and then a focus on the method of how we will include the rest of the faculty and staff in our information gathering and decision making so that when we come forth with a report in November, we really have something that everybody in the middle school knows about, um, feels that we can do, and fits into our curriculum. And this is our effort to look at something five through eight, so it, nothing is out there in isolation by itself, but that it's all connected. And we will be making a more formal report to you in November. 
This afternoon at our team leaders meeting, Bob Spear, who is the executive director of the New England League of Middle Schools, known as NELMS, came to talk to us um, regarding our external review. And he is the person that, that is the group we are gonna do a contract with. And basically, we will have another uh, meeting with the person who heads up the visiting teams. His name is Henry Christ, and he will come. And then there will be some data collection, which is, pr is pretty much a survey that people give the faculty. Um, that data will be collected before the winter break in December. And then right now, tentatively, have planned a visit from an external team sometime in January or February with a hopeful report out to us in March. And then we would be looking to use those to help us design some of our work for the 98-99 school year. So we look forward to that work. And the one other thing I was asked to update, because we haven't got our representatives chosen yet, um, they won't be appointed, Charlie. Actually, the student body elects them. But um, they should be here for October because our student council will get underway and also our sports activities and some of our other activities we hope to get underway as soon as we get clearance from the co-curricular committee. So um, we're looking forward to starting all those things. We have a lot of energy out there in grades five through eight and ready to put it to good use. So um, I think that sums up my report for this evening unless anyone has a question. Yes, Beth. Just two questions. As you're doing the outdoor experience, um, committee report, just please keep in mind that the budget process really begins strong in January and that we would need their recommendations in time to go over to put in place for the next budget season. I, I believe the report calls for us to give you a report in November. Yes, I'm fine. I just want to be sure it gets in the budget so or we have a time to deliberate it during mm -hmm. the budget time. And that's my only other concern with the external review, that if the report doesn't come back till March, it's past our budget time, and if it calls for things that have budgetary implications that we would like to do, it puts us in a bind. And it, 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 puts, it puts the board in a difficult position of supporting a report or not, and mm -hmm. financial decisions have already been made. <coughs> that is true to a degree. There may be a way that we can um, estimate or predict or something with some of their help, and that can be a question we ask them when they come. There really isn't any other way to condense it anyway from the meeting um, today and still have it give us the quality of information that we want. Both Cynthia and Kevin were able to come to that meeting and listen, and I certainly was encouraged by what we heard, but I would guard against condensing it any, to any kind of shorter time frame because I'm afraid we wouldn't have the input that we need to have to come out of the final report. Just keep it in mind, and if there's anything that they could suggest to help us so we could get a report back so that any things that have budgetary input implications could be um, put into the next budget, it would be helpful for everybody. Okay. Thank you. Um, the high school. A few weeks back, I mentioned to you that I was very happy to be here, but that was before school had started and before I had met really with students and parents. Uh, now I can say to you that I'm even more pleased than the last time I spoke with you. The students, the faculty, the parents uh, have been welcoming, supportive, uh, positive about uh, looking at the, all of the ways that we can improve an already strong school. Uh, I would echo the uh, students' uh, reaction, uh, Kevin, to your uh, visit to the opening day assembly. Uh, both Dwight Ely and, and I have heard many positive comments from students that they were very happy to hear that. Uh, I'm glad that that uh, worked out, that, that a member of the board was able to come uh, and speak. It shows a mutual intent to try to uh, improve a situation that needed improving. Our efforts uh, thus far have been directed towards beginning an agenda for uh, improvement. And that begins with the uh, information gathering process. So we've been looking uh, initially with department heads, uh, and this process will then spread to other faculty members, students, and parents, uh, at the questions which tend to exist in any school system, uh, and trying to prioritize some of those uh, issues and, and questions and concerns. Uh, issues such as the, the flow of the curriculum, is it smooth, does it work, are there gaps, uh, the consistency and quality of our standards, the role of co-curricular activities, how we organize and use our time, 
uh, faculty and administrative supervision and evaluation, staff development, the overall atmosphere in the school, all of these are, are issues and questions that any school is always uh, looking at. We've begun that process and have now started uh, trying to, at least from the department head input, uh, prioritize uh, those issues to, uh, to determine which of, the, which of them uh, we would like to uh, work on first. At the same time, um, I, I would say that uh, while gathering opinions, uh, I'm spending a lot of time trying to uh, observe and, and develop my own uh, sense of how things uh, are working. And I'm, I'm very pleased with an awful lot of what I see and uh, also have uh, questions. The upcoming events that we have uh, in the very near future, the Thursday night is the annual freshman barbecue. Uh, as most of you know, that's a, uh, primarily a, a social evening, an attempt to just start putting uh, names and faces together, an evening where freshman parents, the freshman students themselves, and uh, uh, faculty and staff get together, uh, enjoy a little bit of food. Um, not uh, long on program, but rather, as I say, uh, meeting each other. That, uh, as was already mentioned, will be followed by homecoming events that include the Parents Association planning of uh, athletic recognition, uh, bonfire, and then the student planned uh, dance and uh, concert with live band. Promises to be a lively evening. Uh, getting my earplugs <laughs> ready. Uh, we have had good meetings with uh, the, the opening assembly and the uh, class meetings have been conscious attempts on our part to, uh, to allow the students to start meeting together to learn how to handle that kind of situation and frankly to see uh, what we can expect in future assemblies. Uh, it was very important for me and a real confidence builder to see how well they handled uh, an opening day assembly in somewhat overcrowded conditions. Uh, and without, uh, I thank the student representatives for their kindness, but I would not classify it as a riveting speech. Uh, it was an opening day uh, attempt to let them uh, get to know a little bit about some of my thoughts, and yet they handled it extremely well with uh, a display at least, an outward display of a good deal of interest. So it made me believe that we can offer uh, programs and use that forum to gather student input uh, and discuss. Uh, it's a very important process, I think, for them to sit together in larger groups like class meetings and, and all school assemblies uh, to, uh, to learn how to express themselves in those groups. The uh, high, school, <coughs> excuse me, high school open house will be Thursday night, September 25th. That will follow uh, a, a traditional uh, form or format of um, uh, walking the parents through their son or daughter's schedule and hearing brief introductions uh, from the teachers regarding the curriculum in those particular classes, some of the things that parents can do to help their sons and daughters succeed uh, in those classes, what some of the expectations will be, uh, and so forth. So that our goal in, in that evening uh, is that parents leave with uh, at least a basic understanding of what their students are going through in their days uh, and, and what they're studying. And that is followed uh, in uh, uh, November by the more uh, uh, parent conference oriented uh, times when you're, you start talking about your individual uh, and how they're doing. Tonight uh, also is the first meeting of the project graduation uh, committee that uh, uh, <laughs> when uh, we started in the senior, I attended the senior class meeting today and uh, we started talking about project graduation and it was a cold reminder of how quickly the year flies uh, once, it, once it does start rolling. But I was glad to hear that the parents are meeting tonight. Uh, Dwight Ely is meeting with them, that's why he is not here and I look forward to being able to meet with them uh, in the near future. I think we have a very supportive group of parents and I'm looking forward to uh, working with them on that uh, uh, very important event. Uh, finally, uh, later uh, in the evening on the agenda, uh, present information regarding a proposed uh, French exchange program, which obviously involves a uh, more than an overnight uh, uh, field trip. Um, but that will come later in the agenda. I welcome any questions. Thank you. I do have a senior, and, and I got good, good vibes from your opening day assembly. 
But you are a nice person. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we strive for, is nice. <laughs> Uh, we move on to Pod and Co. Good evening again. Um, it's not unusual at Pond Co., but it's, uh, it's still impressive how smoothly school begins every year. I think a lot of this is due to the efforts behind the scenes that teacher and staff, maker, uh, staff members make, particularly the classroom teachers who, on their own time before school opened, uh, invited people in for informal open houses. Um, I think that really helps start the school well and builds up a lot of confidence. As you know from last year, um, I asked people to make certain changes this year, particularly in grade four. And from what I've seen with the students and I've talked to the teachers, they're uh, ready to meet the challenge and they seem pretty happy. I mean, there are always uh, more challenges to me, but I think the uh, new structure of having self-contained classrooms will pay off very well in the long run. I do want to uh, compliment the uh, kindergarten team particularly for coming through with less than ideal class size. I, I, I think they've done a terrific job and I want to assure them that this is not a plot to get them to do well with any number of kids that we throw at them. It's a, it's a tough situation for everybody. I mean, I took the responsibility for um, reporting to you about the numbers. They came out higher than I had hoped, but they, uh, they've really done very well. So. Um, more power to them. And we'll still be talking about class sizes and other things at kindergarten. The, uh, the good news for the first grade is that the, the plan worked. We do have smaller class sizes in grade one, which means uh, that the uh, core instruction, I think, should continue to improve. We can um, talk about reading instruction in grouping. We can um, be able to get help where help is needed more, more quickly, I think. And last year, I reported to you that we started um, a teacher assistance team, which is uh, open to semi-referrals from teachers or me or parents. And that is already going. It's up and running and uh, in business this year. And I want to thank Pam Bose and Sarah Berman for sticking with that, because it seems to become institutionalized. And it's a good use of their skills and expertise, everybody's skills and expertise. Friday morning, we're going to have our first reading recovery building team meeting, and we are trying to expand the role and influence of that team rather than just being uh, gate gatekeepers for kids getting in and out of reading recovery in grade one. We're going to try to empower the team to uh, visit each other, make suggestions uh, to teachers, visit classrooms, and, and again, try to beef up reading instruction in the lower grades. It's good now, but I think it could be better. On the downside, in case you don't have kids at Pond Cove, in case your phone hasn't rung, I, I um, did tamper with the schedule one more time. I, I can't leave well enough alone, I'm sure. But I was concerned about the number of kids out at recesses for the past two years. We went from maybe 270 kids two years ago to about half that this year. And I guess my comfort zone is, is three or four classes out at recess at once. It seems to be a reasonable number, uh, reasonable supervision, and um, adequate space for that number. I think in my zeal to do that, I gave the, some teachers and some parents the impression that I was anti-recess. I'm not. I'm just anti-healthy, happy, active recesses. So there, there are still uh, glitches to be worked out, um, which, and the team leaders are going to be dealing with that a Thursday afternoon so we can make a more formal schedule for kids getting in and out of the building. So aside from that, things are going well. Um, summer projects, as you know, included uh, work on the science curriculum. Um, as an offshoot of the reading committee and reading policy, teachers mostly in the lower grades met, but we did have uh, K-4 through representation met to level books. I think we discussed that at reading policy. It means we could actually have a sequence of uh, difficulty of, of trade book readers from K-4. through four. Um, a writing group, K through four, met and evidently had a uh, pretty, pretty good time. They did uh, research before time. They, they read articles. They uh, brought things to talk about. And we'll be following up at a staff meeting in October. Um, social studies, a smaller group met, and we began to map backwards from the learning results to each grade's current social, uh, current social studies topics and uh, practices. And that's going to be probably a year-long project to get that set and then do what the middle school is doing, make recommendations for a, a real sequence in um, social studies topics and have the right material. 
And you may have seen, if you've gotten the faculty meeting notes, that um, Poncove sponsored a week-long session in the responsive classroom. There was so much interest that we had a staff meeting around it, and it looks as if um, some of the techniques and theories behind that will be applied uh, K through four. And if any of you have children in the second grade, you may have seen the stopwatches on certain teachers. They took a course on uh, classroom management and positive discipline, so we're trying that out. And they'll be reporting uh, in, to the faculty and running a faculty meeting in, uh, at next week. And finally, I, I don't think I thank Sue Weatherby enough, but every morning at, at 825, when half of the almost 600 kids at Pond Cove and the, most of them are in at uh, kindergarten, are walking quietly and talking to each other and getting into their classrooms in a really uh, pleasant manner. Um, I think of Sue, and I want to thank her again for doing that, again, behind the scenes, for making our day start so smoothly and the same thing at the end of the day. So thank you, Sue, and Community Services. Tom, one quick question. At the end of our meeting in August, you said all the kindergarten sections were at 22 and holding. Yeah. Where are they now? They're holding. <laughs> <laughs> we had, um, I think the, the rash of um, enrollments um, is over. So we have, uh, just because of the luck of the numbers, one class was with 23. But the, uh, it's, it's fair to say they're about 22 apiece. So each teacher has 43 or 44 kids to deal with during the day. It's a lot to do. Thank you. Just a general um, observation in looking at the class sizes and uh, the class distribution numbers. And the, do we seem to have an increase in homeschool children? Yes. I uh, 19 yes. systemically. Is there, uh, yes. Cynthia, I didn't look at it specifically. Yes, I think you had six or seven last year. They're, they're about 19, yeah. I believe. We need to look at that. I have no idea what the pattern is there, but it does appear this fall we have more homeschoolers. And I wonder what it's a low number as compared to most towns in Maine, but it's still an increase for capitalism. Yeah. I just wonder what support that we will be giving them or what they will request. Um, we, we, we offer an extended hand whenever we get a request, um, for example, to use the library media center or to come even uh, for certain classes. We always uh, are able to uh, honor that request. And the same thing with, with material and sharing uh, curriculum overviews. If we can do it, we will. All set? Thank you very much. Yep. Uh, we move on to the board committee reports. The first is the finance subcommittee in Keith. Uh, we met briefly before uh, the school board meeting tonight. Uh, our new business manager isn't starting until next Monday, so we didn't have a lot of issues to deal with. Uh, we just signed the warrants, and uh, we look forward to a full meeting before the next school board meeting next month. Any comment? We move on to the policy subcommittee in George. Yeah, uh, policy subcommittee. Uh, meeting was reported out on the at the last um, school board formal meeting. Um, the next scheduled meeting is tomorrow morning at uh, 7:45, and uh, we will be looking at uh, three policies: uh, promotion and retention, uh, student suspension, specifically some um, operational guidelines, but uh, around that, and um, scheduling uh, for um, instruction or time on task. Those are the three that we'll be looking at tomorrow. Um, in the meantime, there was a uh, special meeting of the policy subcommittee, uh, committee, and that happened uh, on September 3rd. Um, the purpose of that was to uh, review the request uh, for uh, an exemption or a waiver um, for the um, eligibility requirements uh, that are in place for the high school in terms of athletics and co-curricular activities. Um, the uh, uh, formal committee members, of which there are three, uh, then made their recommendation uh, to the superintendent. Um, and it was that uh, two members um, recommended to the superintendent that the waiver not be granted, and one recommended that the waiver be granted. That's, that, that sort of surfaces this whole other policy issue. Um, that was a policy that was put together last year. It was adopted by the board last year. And I think that there's uh, sentiment on the part of uh, the full board 
um, and that we would um, revisit that. We wanted to see some facts and data behind um, uh, what has happened as a result of that policy. Um, so clearly that's, that's going to be the topic for uh, certainly not tomorrow's meeting, but a subsequent meeting, I'm sure. I will have data for you tomorrow, though, on that topic so okay. for you to consider. And I think it also raised an, a new issue with us because I think what it will probably spur is some more requests for waivers and we may need to have some kind of administrative or policy around what, where those kind of requests go. Do they go to the board as a whole in executive session or do they, be, or do they go to individual um, subcommittees? And I think that's another issue I think that the policy subcommittee or, is going to have to Or is it just something that's handled by the superintendent? Right. So I think we have to set some guidelines. I think we're, we, we seem to be treading on a lot of new ground that we haven't had to deal with in, in the eight years that I've been on the board. So. Any other comments? Thank you. Uh, we move on to new business, and the first is a consideration of the superintendent's nomination of technology coordinator a one-year position. Yes, I wish to nominate Gary Lenoy to a one-year position as technology coordinator, and he will be on leave of absence from his position at the high school during that year. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? And where are we? We have advertised okay. uh, the last two Sundays <laughs> in the newspaper. And we do have a number of applicants, and we'll start to interview soon, Peter, right? <clears throat> yes. yes. <laughs> in That's regards a, to that, what are, you, uh, what are you doing right now? Uh, uh, Gary opened the school year in his position, and then as of Monday, he is now working with Jay, so that he has this week is transition with Jay and Diane Brakeley who is a staff member at the high school anyway, is, is subbing until we fill it on a permanent basis. And she's a very, very competent sub. Yes, right. Uh, consideration of a proposal for a student French trip. You're awesome, please. I, of course, have to approve the location beforehand, so I will be coming to you to ask for support to, to travel to wherever in France. <laughs> uh, David Perry, a high school uh, French teacher, uh, came to me uh, a while ago uh, with the uh, request to reinstitute a program that we had had uh, up to about, I think, four years ago, uh, using an organization uh, known as School Partners Abroad, which is, uh, which is sponsored by the Council on International Educational Exchange. Uh, it's an organization that is uh, recommended, recognized by the National Association of Secondary School Principals. What David was uh, proposing was that we organize an exchange uh, with a school uh, in France, um, and it would be a real exchange uh, where uh, our students would be hosting a group of students from their school, and those same students then, the, uh, the students that are hosting, uh, would then travel to France and be hosted by the same families uh, with which they were already involved. Uh, right now, there, there are details that need to be worked out, the exact uh, dates, uh, exact costs, uh, the participants. But we do need, in the application process, uh, the uh, organization asks if school board approval is required, and in our case it, it is, uh, and then they ask, uh, if so, has it been granted? Uh, my understanding is, and at this point we of course said uh, not yet, uh, that we will be getting uh, back to them. My understanding is that uh, we need to have at least tentative approval before proceeding too much further down the line. The organization, I think, will come back to us uh, in about a month uh, or a month and a half if we don't have approval and say, we've got to put your application on hold until, uh, until we have the approval. Basically, the dates that we are looking the, the trip itself will probably be in, uh, what we're recommending is in the order of three weeks, one of which would be uh, the, uh, the April vacation time that our students are traveling to France. The French students would be coming here for, again, approximately that same three weeks, and we would try to have one of those weeks uh, be the February uh, break. 
that, that would be our preference. Obviously, because this is a partnership, we would have to talk with, the, uh, with, with our partner school to see whether those dates work for them. Uh, if we can arrange it uh, that way or the reverse of, of that way, uh, it would mean students missing approximately 10 days of students involved in the trip missing approximately 10 days of school. Uh, plus, realistically, um, uh, probably a little bit of time, but I, I think we can organize that differently. When the, uh, when the French students come here, there, there are uh, excursions that are organized, and every once in a while some of the host students would be taking part in those, but I think we can cover that more with uh, parent volunteers uh, and so forth. The range of costs appears to be at present time uh, in the range of $1,800 to $2,000 for the participants. That's expensive. Uh, and David and I have talked about that. Uh, there are cheaper ways to do it, but we feel very secure with this particular organization uh, because of their track record. If we establish a partner, uh, a relationship with a partner school in France that we feel very comfortable with, uh, then I would say in coming years we could do much of the organization ourselves and uh, cut the costs. But right now, I think it's worth the extra cost to have uh, a guarantor of sorts, uh, uh, an organization that we know is going to be keeping our interests at heart and not sending uh, a group of students that here that don't really want to be here for any educational purpose but just want to uh, uh, be in the States to, uh, to party or who aren't chaperoned or, or whatever. And that can happen in this type of exchange. I've seen that happen. So I think it's worth the, the extra cost in this first year of reinstituting the program uh, to have a, as I said, a guarantor. Uh, air transportation would, would be the mode of transportation and we would be arranging uh, that for all participants. The students would be housed and fed by the host families. So the expenses uh, will be mainly surrounding the air transportation and then the uh, backup support of the School Partners Abroad organization. Uh, as I mentioned, these will be the same students who will be staying with our families here in Cape Elizabeth. The participants would be determined. It would be strictly voluntary. It's not, it would not be a mandatory uh, piece of any curriculum. Uh, we would be uh, limiting it to students who have completed at least three years of uh, French study, and the maximum size would be a group of 15 uh, students. Um, in their brochures and information, uh, the School Partners Abroad uh, does address the issue of insurance. It appears and this is something that we would uh, continue to look into, but it does uh, appear that we are, that our participants would be completely covered by health accident and personal liability, and <laughs> the one that, that uh, grabbed Cynthia's attention, the repatriation insurance policies uh, issued through the council. Uh, participating schools are provided with institutional liability insurance, and the insurance coverage is included in the comprehensive uh, program cost. As I mentioned, we do not have all the details uh, in place. Um, I would ask for your uh, uh, approval uh, to continue proceeding. Uh, David Perry is here tonight also to uh, help with answering any questions which you may have. I would uh, tell you that I give it my strongest endorsement. I think this kind of exchange program is of tremendous value to uh, our participants, both when they travel, uh, but and when they host, and when they host, uh, the rest of our school also will benefit from the exposure of these students uh, for, they wouldn't be spending all of their time in our classes, but certainly we'd be arranging some time, and I think that's always an eye-opener. I'm open for questions, as is David Perry. Um, when the students are here and when our students are there, for the two weeks that, let's say, classes are going on, not the one week of vacation, um, would the hosting student, let's say the Cape Elizabeth student in February, would be expected to go to their two weeks of classes here? or yeah. Yeah. Yes, our students would be uh, continuing in their own classes, although, as I mentioned, there probably would uh, it'd probably be reasonable to expect that, uh, let's say, the, they're going to take an excursion to uh, a certain point of interest uh, here in Maine, and maybe a couple of the students would go uh, with them to, uh, to help them to enjoy the, the site. But no, they, they would still be expected to be in classes here during the time that we were hosting. Uh, yeah. And would those French students, would be shadowing them at school some too or not? Sometimes. Uh, 
we, David and I were talking about that and, and that becomes uh, kind of a matter of negotiation and interest level. Uh, uh, sometimes you get a group of students in, a, in an exchange like this who are very interested in seeing how our school system works and they really want to uh, attend classes. On the other hand, if they're feeling um, fairly lost because of the language, uh, uh, it doesn't tend to be a good use of their time to be sitting down in the cafeteria waiting for their host student to finish up classes. So you, you, you tend to uh, play that a little bit by ear, but I, we certainly would expect that they would be attending some classes and our students would be attending some classes in their school system. So that would be the reverse when they were in France. They right. would be doing some shadowing, but other excursions. But other excursions trips. also. And who plans those excursions and trips? Would that fall to David to do while they're here? And then when they're in... Oh, well, I don't know. Um, the exchange... The hosting school would be, it would be their responsibility to plan the uh, exchanges and that would fall upon me as the organizer of this trip along with um, the parents we will all be getting together and we'll, we'll brainstorm a huge list of what would be possible activities that we could all participate in. And then some parents will say, gee, I have a contact at um, Naval Air Station in Brunswick, I'll go with that. Another one says, gee, I have a contact at SD Warren, um, I'll go ahead with that. Someone else says, hey, I can get us into the State House. And so they go off and plan those. And so some are all-day trips and some maybe afternoon trips. Um, when we have hosted in the spring, we've taken a cruise on Casco Bay. Casco Bay in February might be a bit bitter, but um, there are other things that we can certainly come up with, day trips and half-day trips. What has been the interest so far of the student body that prompted you to even come forward with this request? Every year there's interest. And some years the interest is stronger than others. I've, I've, many students have talked to me. We haven't had a trip in, I think, four years. Many students have talked to me and to Mrs. Liberty about the possibility of a trip, uh, mainly the upperclassmen, the juniors and the seniors. Um, this current senior class has close to 50 students who are in advanced levels of French. Um, that's a large pool to be drawing upon. And that, then they're, they're the, um, the fourth year students, too. Um, I don't want to go too far because I don't want to dangle some, something in front of them that I say, oh, no, there's a, what's the going to trip and say, oh, there's no trip, can't go. So as soon as I have approval or a, a tentative approval, then I'm willing to go forward with um, advertising to the students. And with getting to the students now, it gives them long enough to start to think about what they would need to do to come up with the finances um, rather than in October or November, that's very late to come up with these, these sums of money. In past trips, have they done fundraising type things? Because I don't remember ever hearing. In past, no. Um, we have not done these types of fundraising, fundraising activities. Um, the price has not seemed as exorbitant as it has. The, the most recent trip was done privately by Mrs. Liberty because at that time we had been working with that school for almost 10 years. So once you have a link, um, you can cut the cost of this trip uh, pretty quickly, because I have talked with um, private travel agencies about putting s what are some basic costs that we would run into in, in doing this, and they could cut this 30% uh, pretty quickly. But when you don't have a contact, it's hard to do that. And having an umbrella organization that can look after you, have repatriation insurance for whatever, um, whatever purpose, um, and just having a fallback that if there are glitches somewhere that you can call someone and they're going to come and take care of it and they will be at your door, um, it's worth it to get it started until you have um, a good relationship with your hosting school. How do you make the connection with the, with the school? I mean, do you have some choices or...? Um, what will happen is um, I have sent in a packet of materials and they are forwarding these to France. Um, today, you know, Monday was the first day of school in France, so they're just organizing their teachers from their Paris bureau, um, and it kind of is kind of like a dance, you know. You, they throw some names at us, they'll throw some names at the schools, and, and we try and hook up, and then we start making phone calls and talk to each other and see if there's some sort of a rapport there. And, and go forward with it. I did try to establish such a link with a school in Brittany. Um, I worked with them for three years and it just was never able to come through. So I'm, I'm looking for a new school now. 
Are all the grades allowed to participate? No. Um, by, there's sort of an, an internal policy. There was a policy that existed that the school board put together in the um, early 80s uh, when these were more common. And those guidelines have been followed. Um, minimum uh, requirements that you need to be at least a sophomore and you need to at least be in third year of the, of the language. But priority is given to um, upper level students who are um, in an upper level of the language. So it tends, this year I would expect us most likely to be working with juniors and seniors who are in French four, five, and six. Is there a minimum grade point that's required for them to participate? Um, in the past, if the student had less than a C in any one course, um, we would not let them go. There, there is no official policy. Um, that's, I'm getting at yeah. the question, do the stu students need to pass the previous quarter in all si six subjects to be eligible to take this, participate in this trip? That is, um, with, 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 with the passing of that policy, um, that, is, that question has not been uh, raised before. I, I would tend to, uh, we, we would have to discuss it, but I would tend to say that uh, if a student were having difficulty in their academic work already, we would not be recommending that they miss two weeks uh, of school. So one of the, one of the uh, um, criteria that would be set, I think, would be uh, that, they are, that they are succeeding academically. A lot of students can't afford to miss two weeks. I think it would be a very reasonable policy. Um, as I said before, uh, the previous policy was a D. If you're getting a D, you would not be allowed to participate, certainly if you're failing a course. Um, to miss possibly two weeks of school, that's, that's a lot. This would not technically be a co-curricular uh, activity, but I think we would treat it uh, in a very similar vein. So you're basically stating that they would, you, you feel that they would have to pass that last quarter as to qualify and have a minimum grade point average, mm -hmm. right? I think we ought to be treating all circumstances on an equal basis. Mm -hmm. One of the, the uh, things that, that could be uh, complicating in, in this type of situation is we, we will be ending up making a commitment. Uh, and to pull somebody, uh, if let's say the end of December, it would be two weeks before uh, the host family, uh, the, the student was coming. Uh, it, could be, it could be very difficult. So I suspect we'd be trying to look at it beforehand, be a little bit more proactive, and see if anybody is having any difficulty at all. I wouldn't want to get down to that last quarter uh, before the trips and say, oh, I'm sorry, uh, whoever was going to be hosted by the student can't, can't make the trip, or we need to find a new host family at short notice. I think that, that would be uh, untenable, I think. So that might be the case that the uh, policy of a waiver might be initiated at that time that's been discussed by the committee, right? as a possibility to, to cover that situation? I, I, I suppose it could be handled that way. I'd, I'd, as I say, I'd prefer to be proactive on it and see if, if, if somebody is having difficulty leading up to uh, that time, uh, we'd probably be wanting to uh, uh, not consider them for participation. Although this, this in a pure sense, would not be a co-curricular no. activity. No. And you've already set some minimums anyway from past procedure by saying even if you had a D you couldn't you know. past procedure has been anything less than a C was unacceptable <clears throat> you but, mentioned that, but that decision tends to be made in November right at the end of the mm -hmm. first quarter I think uh, rather than waiting until the end of the second quarter on that one you mentioned that our students would have a fairly uh, high level of proficiency in French are you expecting the same thing in English for the students coming my last question is, is there support among the other faculty members who would have to um, accommodate their curriculum to the students that are coming and going? You feel like there's support that they would, you know, be getting these kids that are leaving for two weeks, their assignments or those kind of things? It, it's always, uh, we, ha we have not discussed this at a, uh, at a meeting of the full faculty at this time. Uh, I would guess, though, and from talking with David, I think this has held true in the past. Um, uh, there will be a split. Uh, there are those that feel, uh, as I do, that, that this type of experience uh, is extremely valuable and, and, and uh, probably outweighs what they might have missed in a, a particular uh, two weeks of, of class. Uh, and there are others who uh, 
who, who rightly, and, and you don't want people feeling that their subject matter isn't important, but who feel that uh, it, it, it uh, really is difficult to miss two weeks of that particular class, and, and they know that there will be makeup involved. We would be dealing with a relatively small number of students, so I don't uh, think that it would have major impact. I think that faculty could uh, see that this kind of program adds a lot to the experience of the student. Any idea how many? Uh, no more than 15. That would be maximum. Uh, I think we were thinking that 12 might be a, an ideal size, but uh, we wouldn't want more than 15. And you, you would be the only chaperone? Well, I was told the other day if a group's over 15, they get to take another chaperone. <laughs> Anyone want to go to France? <laughs> um, yes, I'm the only chaperone, and that's why we like to limit it at maximum uh, 15 when we feel most comfortable with 12. It's a number you can... I got 10 fingers, so it's a number you can keep tabs on. As, as the one who takes care of the purse strings here, obviously there is a financial implication here because we would have to hire a substitute teacher for, for David while he was gone. I mean, I think that's a, a good price to pay for the experience for the students, but there is a financial implication. Yes, there is. Well, I'll make a motion that we approve the um, request um, for the extended field trip. Second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Six zero. Thank you Good very much. much. Thank you very much. Uh, we now move on to approval to receive and spend all federal and state grants for the 1997-98 school year. And I think in we, yes, we just need now. a motion to that effect. That's all. You do that once a year, and there is no. Uh, obligation of local funds by passing that motion. Keith? I move we approve uh, to receive and spend all federal and state grants for the 97 98 school year. Do I have a second? Second. George? Any discussion? All those in favor? 6 0. Consideration of the superintendent's nomination of athletic fee positions for the fall 1997 year. I have Jody Lewis for the eighth grade girls soccer coach. Would you like to do them all at once? Yes, please. Jason McKeechee, seventh grade boys soccer coach. J.T. Turner, high school golf coach. And Joe Ellen Rand, freshman girls soccer coach. There are four. I move that we accept the superintendent's nominations. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Six zero. Charlie, I just wanted to thank Keith for a very good information meeting at the middle school yesterday. Um, I think everybody went away with a much clearer understanding of policies and procedures, and you did a great job. Thank you. I'd like to second that from uh, the high school audience. I think it was important and it's a good reminder to have our athletes in that type of situation. That was a good job, Keith. Thank you. Keith, would you like to come forward and kind of update us on your full-time position, full-time, part-time <laughs> position? <laughs> Starting with the wonderful uh, office arrangement that you now have. <laughs> yes, that, that, that is a good part of it, yeah. Uh, so far, uh, it's been going uh, pretty well. It's rather hectic for starting off. Uh, I'll tell you, there's, there's no way it could be done without Deb Raymond. She has been uh, just terrific. Um, we've had a couple of times where we've used the site supervisors, and that, uh, that has worked out very well. And I think, uh, you know, as we work out some of the bugs and so forth, I think uh, things will work out pretty well. Thank you. Any questions? No, I just wanted to say, Keith, you might want to tell everybody you do have a dedicated phone line now to call the <laughs> athletic department. And I can't remember what, well, I don't know. I can't remember what it was. It <laughs> uh, yes, it's uh, 741, which, you know, uh, I mentioned the other last night with the parents. I mean, I saw the number. I was surprised, too. But it is a Cape Elizabeth number, I guess, 741-7071. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Okay, consideration of the superintendent's nomination of co-curricular fee positions for the 97-98 school year. I have a number of them. In the theater department, the theater manager, Dick Mullen, and the theater assistant, Barbara Kelly. Freshman advisor at the high school, Dwight Ely. Sophomore advisors, advisors, plural, Elaine Brownell and Julie Salikas. Junior advisor, Betsy Nielsen, and senior advisor, Nancy Murphy. Speech, co speech coordinator, I guess I better go see her. Speech coordinator, Sarah Franklin. Debate coach and Lincoln Douglas and policy coordinator, Michael Efren. Policy debate coach, Dwight Ely. Math team, Tony Giadoni and Chris Newell. Visual Arts Club, Mary Hart. Student Service Program, Skip Crosby. And we'll move to the middle school, co-curricular stipended positions. Tony Boffa for instrumental music, Joanne Lee for chorus, grades seven and eight. Tom Wilbur for math team, seven and eight. Julie Salikas and Paige Brown for student council, five through eight. Stephen Price for drama. Beverly Bisbee for computer, Susie Van Wee for art. Gail Parker for Sign Chorus, and Gary Record for Chewonky Leader. Move that we accept the uh, superintendent's nominations for these positions. Do we have a second? Second. John, I have a question on the high school. What are these fractioned hours? Uh, I think we need to round them off, I, or... I, 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 I left them as they were. <laughs> I We're very exact about the number of hours. I love my yellow highlighter and my sheet is covered with hi yellow highlights. I think we need to just round them off or... I, th or I think uh, in, in looking at it, it appeared to me that some of those, uh, and all of them were because of splits. There had been uh, uh, 300 hours uh, allocated and then it was decided to split it between uh, four people or something like that instead of one, and so it ended up, uh, well, that's not a good example. That would have broken. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think my favorite is the 0.5641. Yeah. <laughs> that, would, that would be an accountant's nightmare. We will, we will hold them to every second. <laughs> that's right. Any other comments or uh, discussion? All those in favor? 6-0. Um, Approval of school board goals for 97-98. And I guess I will do that. Um, these were goals that we met, that we drew up as a board uh, at a workshop in August. Uh, we met with the administrators that same day and kind of reviewed some of these. And um, thanks to George, he cleaned them up for us. And um, um, I think I, what I'll do is, is we kind of did a different process this year and, and with George's leadership and, and um, he kind of led us through kind of looking at, looking at goals a different way. Um, we looked at some particular targets. Um, one was to refine and clarify the role of the school board refine and clarify expectations of the superintendent and the administrators, establish clear, achievable, measurable priorities, present outcome-based expectations, and I think that's the, dif the difference in, in where our goals are going this year, that they are outcome-based. And finally, keep it simple. We kind of broke it down into four goal categories. Academics and curriculum, systems administration, organizational and individual development, and in general goals. Under academics and curriculum, the outcome, concise professional syllabus in place no later than two weeks into the term for every class for all schools. How, how people do that is is, is their job. The outcome is we would like those. The outcome, at least one system-wide and one school-specific curriculum development effort completed by year end. All schools, 100% staff participation. Under systems administration, the outcome an operational, effective, performance, feedback, and management system in place for teachers, staff, and coaches, with particular emphasis on probationary teachers. 
and the organizational individual development outcome. Aligned, focused staff development plan developed and implemented for the 97-98 school year. Um, essentially what we're putting into the staffs and the administrators um, laps is to find their own um, staff development plan for the year. Outcome, a professional external school review completed with a continuous improvement plan implemented by year end, doing one school per year, and for the 97-98 year, it will be the Cape Elizabeth Middle School. That process has already started. Under general, outcome, a systemic report of standardized testing with a comprehensive analysis of scores and response plan developed and implemented systemically. Um, that will be something that we probably would, would expect in, in November and again when we have our um, spring review. Outcome, education involvement effort with the town council and the community to be completed for the 97-98 year with results expected. A 25% increase in non-parent school volunteers. Three business partnerships in place. Community organizations meeting in our schools. This is kind of, of a board um, proactive role and our kind of a specific goal for us. And we also felt that there were a couple of exploration areas that we needed to look at. One was looking at full day kindergarten and also looking at the calendar and time on task issues. Um, these are things that have, that have been discussed in the past and we feel that those discussions need to go on. Um, they aren't really goals, but areas that we would continue to talk and, and uh, study. Any other? Comments on our goals or additions, make, deletions? No, I'll make a motion. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I move that we approve the 97 98 school board goals as presented. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? Any discussion from the public? Seeing none, all those in favor? 6 0. And I think based on our conversation, when we develop these, that at the November school board workshop, we will revisit these with the administration. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to, to get these out to both the staff and the, the public. So we need to find some avenue in doing that so that every, every staff member has a copy mm -hmm. that the they're posted. Parent association newsletters would be a good way to get them to parents. We could get them on one sheet or something. And and get those out to those groups, um, other community groups. We might think of the Cape Courier. And okay, so, um, schedule of school board meetings and workshops for 97, 98. Um, what I think we need to do is to get, get some ideas of what type of workshops we would like to have this year. Uh, we generally schedule at least one workshop a month other than December. And usually during budget season, we don't try to, try to schedule. Um, I think our first workshop, which will be on September 16th, September 16th we are going to look at the parent surveys and, and the exit interviews of parents who have taken children out of our system to go to school elsewhere. Um, so we're going to review those. It will be at 6.30 in the high school library. Seven, I get outvoted. Okay, seven. Workshops are going to be at 7 p.m. Okay. Um, if anyone on the board has some ideas for workshops, um, if you could get those to the superintendent, that we could discuss. Yeah, I've made a tentative um, arrangement with Harry Pringle to perhaps be with you at your October workshop. I think that's important every couple of years as you get new board members to meet with the school attorney and talk about meeting procedures and some new areas as far as employment issues since that's always a, an important issue to us and any other topics that you feel interested in and that he feels board members need to be updated on. So well, I have not heard back from him as to his availability. Will that be the 28th of that October, would be, fourth uh, Tuesday? 
It will be the fourth Tuesday, right? Is that not a good time for you, John? No, it's good. Okay. That's the, <coughs> that's the date I gave him, and I don't know whether he hasn't responded as to whether he's available or not. Generally, we set up our board meetings and board workshops for the second and fourth t Tuesdays of the month. Um, the September one is at a different time to accommodate our superintendent who will be out of the system for a while. So, I, and I think some of our goal expectations may generate some, some workshops also. Charlie, you might want to note too that the November one will be the second Wednesday rather than Tuesday because okay. Tuesday is a holiday. So it will be no meeting at the meeting, school board meeting, and the workshop will be right. different dates. Right. And if the staff or the administration have some ideas, you could also pass those on to us also. Excuse me, did, did you have a different date for your workshop? In November? In November? No. Okay, it's still the fourth. Right. Tuesday. Unless it conflicts with is that Thanksgiving week, is that an issue to people? It is. It would be the 25th, right. which is the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, which is the 27th. And that's fine with me, but I don't know whether other people have a problem with that or not. School's in session on the School will be in session, yeah. right. I think there was, uh, there was a commitment early on uh, as we uh, looked at the goals, um, not only to revisit them in October, but to take the school year and try to do some kind of quarterly review of those goals so um, some segment of those workshops may indeed be a review of, um, you know, where are we against the, the goals that we've committed to, just to keep them alive and in front of us. Okay. Uh, citizens' participation at school board meetings. Um, uh, this was an agenda item that was uh, put onto the agenda by John, if you'd like to. Uh, thank you, Charlie. I'd like to make a motion to add a new agenda item number nine, audience of citizens, open discussion. Citizens in the audience will be privileged to speak on any educational topic. Such privilege is to be limited to one presentation per citizen of not more than five minutes, total time not to exceed 30 minutes and to renumber unfinished business to item 10 and new business to be renumbered to item 11. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Or if, 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 if there is a question to, is there a reason why you would like to add this agenda item? Yes, I would like to have the the citizenship have an opportunity to address the uh, school board on items that are not on the agenda. In my uh, quest for this office, I ran into many citizens in the town and, and they expressed an interest to be able to come before you to talk about educational topics. So that's why I've made the motion and if there's somebody on the board that would like to second it, it would be greatly appreciated. Do we have a second so we can move? Second. Okay. Any discussion of the motion? Beth? Yeah. Um, I will not support the motion. It's not because we don't want to hear from the citizens of Cape Elizabeth. It's just that there's so many emotional issues that we hear from parents on. And a lot of them have to do with where their particular child is at that moment. A lot of times they have to do with personnel issues. And we have always been an audience for any parent group that has a particular issue. I can tell you of many meetings that I have sat through with parents who are very upset about some issue, and we usually get two or three school board members together, and we are happy to sit down with them. And it's a much more informal time to really discuss it and bring out other information. Um, my fear is with having people able to speak at public meetings about things that um, inappropriate personnel Things will be brought up, and I know we can cut people off and say, no, we can't talk about that. But it's difficult to do. Having sat in the chair seat for two years, it is hard to cut people off and say, no, we can't discuss that, and then they want to know why. And um, We are more than happy, to, as the chairperson, as Charlie is, to listen to if people want something put on the agenda. There's an appropriate way to do that. 
The superintendent is always willing to talk to parents on any issue. Um, and I'm just not sure the right forum is to um, have people be able to speak on any issue at any time at the school board meeting. Any other? I, I just, uh, I guess I would echo um, uh, Beth's sentiments. I, I think that uh, it seems to have worked well as, a, as a, one of the more, one of the newer school board members. Um, I've seen how issues uh, have uh, been brought forth to the board, uh, either through a specific board member or through the chair. Um, it, it seems to it seems to work very well, um, and I think that um, the by basically having an open meeting um, where things can be added to the agenda just on that evening, uh, it sort of it sort of ends up being sort of spur of the moment hot issue of the day, and I I think that. Um, I, Although my tenure is short, I've had enough experience with some of those issues to know that when you really dig into them and, uh, and, and, and get involved in them, um, there's a way to, to sort of settle them appropriately. And I, I don't think a public forum is always the best, is in the best interest of, of, uh, of what's trying to be served. I think it's very easy and simple to get something on the agenda. And hopefully there would be enough forethought uh, if someone were to um, address the school board in a public forum, that they would be able to contact one of us uh, ahead of time and, and get it added to the agenda. Keith? As I understand this type of situation, the board would not be under any obligation to add that person's topic to the agenda, would they? It would be just simply a their ability to speak their mind for five minutes at which point there'd be no board action or, or anything like that. Is that correct? Is that the understanding? Uh, it seems to me that there does need to be a forum for people to speak at if, if perhaps maybe they don't feel satisfied by the procedure, the procedure that we've set up to get something uh, specifically onto the agenda. Uh, so I, I think I'd, I'd support this motion. Kevin? Yeah, I, th I think, John, in your original motion, you didn't, cl you didn't clarify and spell that out, that it was not the in your intention or the intention of this motion for the board to take instant and immediate action, that the board would simply be uh, taking comments under advisement and where necessary and appropriate, delegating out the uh, responsibility to look into that in, uh, to the appropriate personnel. And I would only add other, one other comment that I, I will support this, but I would certainly urge uh, the citizens slash residents of Cape Elizabeth to follow the chain of command in their issues. And if it begins at, in the classroom level to speak with the teacher, move to the principal, to the superintendent. Uh, again, uh, my understanding is that we are simply taking these issues <clears throat> under advisement, not necessarily acting on them. Uh, Charlie, may I quote, the public participation at board meetings, file DDDH. It's one, two, three, fourth paragraph. The board shall give due attention to Excuse me. The board shall give due attention to comments and contributions from the audience, but shall not be expected to respond or take action immediately. Audience inquiries, other than simple questions, shall be referred to the superintendent, who shall investigate or consider the matter and report to the citizen and to the board. If board action is indicated, the item may be included on the agenda for a subsequent meeting. So we already have a policy which kind of alludes to an open discussion or an open forum? No, not really. Uh, really, your agenda at the top of the present agenda specifically goes to an item that is introduced during the, during the course of the meeting. So if somebody brings up something and, and you recognize a citizen, they can speak for up to five minutes on that item until you call for a vote. I'm talking about educational items that are not on the agenda. Okay. Having been a board chair once, and, and really the change was, was made four years ago, um, because of the number of students that we deal with, 
because of the number of, <coughs> of, of specific student issues and the, the large number of staff, I have a hard pro I have a hard I mean it's hard to manage and being aware to make sure that you're going to cut off someone before before you get into uh, you know a very uh, possible liable situation and I and I I want to open up the avenues for the community to be able to address the educational issues and to get something onto the school board agenda but I think sometimes coming before a meeting um, and bringing some, something up entirely um, not on the agenda that could possibly have um, um, management, um, meeting management um, um, complications, you know, I'm, I don't think that I could support this. I think we have a process. We allow citizens to speak on items that are on the agenda. We have a process of getting things onto an agenda. And um, I think sometimes um, specific issues are, can actually be handled before they ever get to a public meeting. And I think sometimes that's where it, the way they should be handled. Uh, can I make a final comment? Uh, our town council has two items on their agenda. Excuse me. Our town council has two items on their agenda, which is for open public discussion. And to the best of my knowledge, that's never been a problem. I don't think any citizens ever violated it or put the council in a bad position. I have addressed the council on numerous occasions myself. I believe the citizens of this town are very civil. I don't believe that they would put the school board in a position that they would feel, be, feel uncomfortable. I did a survey, and there are the majority of the schools in the greater Portland area on their agendas have this item so that the public can come forward and, and address something to an educational nature. I'll close just by saying the school board's code of ethics adopted 121096, number seven, says, I will encourage the input of school staff, students, and citizens on educational issues and will consider such input in my deliberations. So I think we need to be open I think this is the forum for people to come forward and give us ideas. I don't think it's necessary that we have to meet people in the shopping center or in stores or also be on the phone for numerous hours. They have the forum to come here, express their views, and we can act on them at a later date. Thank you. Beth. I'll just <clears throat> make one final comment. Um, the citizens of Cape Elizabeth can be very um, civil, but they can also be very emotional. And I have spent hours and hours on phones with people trying to sort out problems and issues. And a lot of times, if someone just comes before us for five minutes, they might bring up something that we have no information on how to respond to, and we need time to get back and talk to Cynthia or the administrator in the building, and then get back to that parent. And I am much more comfortable um, doing business that way, um, as opposed to being put in a difficult situation. And so many of these school issues are incredibly emotional for the people involved with them. And um, I, I really think we can serve the community better by letting them um, contact us anytime and request things on the agenda if that's the issue or talk to us and we find out and get back to people. And um, so I still will not support the motion and I feel we are still doing our service um, to the citizens of Cape Elizabeth. George. Just one final comment, um, and again, I, th I think it, it, would be, it would certainly surprise people to know how much time school board members um, spend uh, other than sitting up at this uh, podium here. I think some of the, probably the most ineffective time that we spend is actually up here in our formal meetings with stifled conversations and discussions and protocol and so on. Um, the, the, the most effective, the shakers and movers, the things that really happen are really not uh, in front of this podium. Um, this is a formal meeting. There is a, a process. It's a very simple process to get something on the agenda. If someone really wishes to, to do that, they can address, um, they can address it. I, I think that um, we uh, have so many other opportunities and so many other forums uh, to more effectively address uh, concerns, particularly, as, as Beth says, uh, things that are very complex, things that are very emotional. Um, and and um, uh, again, I, I, 
I don't think that it's us cutting, cutting the citizens off. I think it's what's being practical. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion? Aye. Be Kevin, Keith, and John. All those opposed? Without a majority, the motion fails. Um, unpaid leave? Right. I have a request from Ray Cooper, who is a long-term teacher in Cape Elizabeth. Ray is a very accomplished weaver, and he has an opportunity to participate in a, a craft fair, in, a jury <coughs> craft fair in Philadelphia. It's a three-day craft fair, and he will use his two personal days, and he's asking for the third day as an unpaid leave. And you notice um, in his information, he said in the 10 years that he's been a teacher here, he believes he's only used one personal day in 10 years. So. Based on that and based on the fact that this, I think, is a good extension of his abilities, I recommend that you grant this one day. I move that we accept the superintendent's recommendation on the request and grant the one day unpaid leave of absence. Do have a second? second that. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Six zero. Thank you. Um, it dates to remember um, the school board policy subcommittee meeting is tomorrow morning, uh, September 10th at 7.45 in the council chamber conference room. Um, and on October 15th um, at 7.45 in the council conference chamber rooms. The finance subcommittee meeting will be on Tuesday, October 14th at 6.30 in the council chamber's conference room, followed by the regular school board meeting at 7.30 in the council chambers. There will be a school board workshop meeting September 16th at 7 p.m. in the high school library. The topic is parent surveys, exit interviews. And on Wednesday, September 19th at 4 p.m. in the council chamber conference room will be the first meeting of the space study committee. And that is not a correct seven. It must be the 17th, 17th. right. Okay. And Charlie, can I just add that the pool, the first meeting of the pool committee is uh, Thursday night, September 11th at 7.30 in the basement of this building, Town Hall Cafeteria. You say 7.30? Um, yes, yeah, 7.30 on uh, September 11th. I entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Do we have a second? You've got it. Keith? Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? 6 0. Yeah,